Okay, guys. I had to do this because I wasn't going to do it till tomorrow. But there was such a massive response to this video. And it was so cool. Watching all you guys come out with your opinions on the two instruments. And the reasoning behind the opinions. We got a lot of really, really cool feedback on this. Having a cup of tea while I'm thinking about all of it. So I want to tell you, I actually had to make a chart because it was so cool to see how this came, how this turned out. Okay, so here's the numbers. Very, very, very interesting. The people that knew which one was the Martin, okay, 18 people. That's the highest number on the chart, 18 people. The next highest number on the chart are the people who knew the Alvarez and preferred it over the Martin, 10. 10 people. Three who couldn't tell, one who liked them both and couldn't decide, and five who got it wrong. Just they didn't know which guitar was which, they just got it wrong. That is a really, really cool demographic because it shows a couple of things. It shows that the people on this site, and I think this site is a great cross-section of musicians, we know our guitars. We know our guitars. And if you love Martins, which most bluegrass players do, it's pretty easy to tell a Martin even if you can't see it. But it was really weird. The guys who got it wrong, the five people who got it wrong, got it way wrong. It, was, it wasn't just... Uh, I shouldn't say that. That's not fair. What I mean to say is they, they didn't get the guitars right and they, were, they, they did extol the virtues of the Alvarez thinking it was a Martin. But that proves my point. And those are the most helpful people in this whole survey because that's showing us that... I'm indeed correct that you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a wicked, wicked guitar. So, to answer everybody's question, and I have a few things I need to say about this as well, because there were some really good comments. And I appreciate everybody being kind and nice and no trolls and no arguing, and it's, it's, it's unusual. It's, it just goes to show you, mm. guitar players have more fun. And we can talk to each other without getting all weird, like everybody else on Facebook. Um, so there was a few comments. The, the, uh, uh, one was about strings and somebody said that they felt, uh, it wasn't a fair comparison because the strings sounded brand new and hadn't broken in yet and on and on. And, and I was just, uh, they, they suspected they might just be judging the sound of the guitar based on the strings. Uh, I have to tell you, that's not true. The strings on both of these guitars are old and not elixirs, which is what I usually use, which in my opinion have the best sound. They might not sound as good as, let's say, a set of uh, GHS Phosphor Bronze brand new out of the package, but they sound as good as two-day-old GHS, and they sound that good forever until you take them off. So I'd rather, I, I usually, I choose to make that trade-off to, to, I trade away that really wicked, I shouldn't even say it's really wicked. It's a little bit better than Elixir. Uncoated GHS strings, or even Diodarios. It is what it is. But Elixirs last longer. I can get four shows out of one set of, of Elixir strings, and otherwise I have to change my strings every set. I couldn't even get through an entire sh uh, show with one set of uncoated strings. So, anyhow, so the strings on both guitars are not new, they're old. The ones on the Alvarez are actually factory. And the ones on this are, I'm not sure what they are, but they're not very good strings. I don't think either set of, either strings are very good. I don't like them myself. So, guitar number one is Clarence. And uh, indeed the Martin. So, there's some things about this guitar. Because it's a Martin, it's very difficult to uh, to temper it. 
meaning it takes a bit longer to tune this thing than other guitars. And I still love it. I love this guitar. It has, it, it sounds like a Martin. It, uh, in my opinion, I love the guitar, but there's things about it that are better on other guitars, I find, like the top end of it. It sort of dies up the neck because that's the way it's built. It's built for rhythm, hard driving, pop and pound and banjo killing rhythm, right? I'm using a really good pick like I use uh this isn't a blue chip but it's like a blue chip it's it's a it's a Dunlop style you know I like these things I've got a lot of months out of this one pick without having to replace it so it's got good tune it tone it's a little brighter than a blue chip but and there's just the uh it this guitar does have a lot of bottom end and it's a muddy bottom end, which is normal for, you know, for guitars, <laughs> for Martins. They have a big, boomy bottom end, when they're, especially when they age. And they sound tight and constricted. They don't ring a lot. They're very percussive, powerful instruments. This guitar needs to be played, I think, a bit. She's a, she's a little temperamental. But there she is. So that's your 15-year-old uh, Clarence White D28. And the other thing I want to mention, too, I don't know I don't know how people feel. I, I noticed there was a couple people that made comments about the fact that this guitar sounds differently because it has a larger sound hole. And I... I, I, I don't I know the consensus on this with many people is that this large sound hole makes a difference. But the fact of the matter is, if you ask any luthier, removing this wood is not conducive of extra volume. It actually takes away from the soundboard. And whoever thought to do this to Rice's 28, well, Clarence White's guitar, the, I don't think it was Clarence that actually cut the sound hole out. I'm not sure why they cut the sound hole out. But it doesn't actually change anything about the sound of a guitar. I know because I've cut the sound hole out of guitars when I was a younger guy and I had, uh, you know, bad guitars or bad-ish guitars. I took a hacksaw to my guitar and cut the sound hole out. You know what difference it made? Absolutely none. Actually, it made it sound worse because you're literally taking, this is a lot of surface. It's a quarter of an inch of wood missing from the top, from the vibrating surface. This is the soundboard. If you remove parts of the soundboard, there's nothing to vibrate and it doesn't allow any more air to escape. That's, I think it's, I think that should be a rectified. Somebody should come forward like a luthier and explain to us the mathematics and science behind why enlarged sound holes don't really make a difference. But again, that's my opinion and I've and I've got that opinion from talking to dozens of luthiers and I, I I've and and having guitars built for me and asking a luthier, "Can you make it have a an enlarged sound hole?" and the guys like, "Why would I do that?" Well, you know, Rice is the old the bone, right? The old 28 that Rice plays. He had an and they go, "Whoever did that was an idiot." they they just butchered their guitar for no purpose and i've i've had that conversation with a lot of luthiers and i got shot out of the saddle like every single time by every luthier i've ever known so that's uh i think this is 
if anything, this might actually decrease the quality of the sound of this guitar. But anyhow, let's move on to the number two, which is, of course, the Alvarez. So next, of course, we have the Alvarez. The bluegrass model Alvarez guitar. And in my opinion, uh, I personally think this guitar sounds better than my Martin. And the reason I say that is because it has more clarity. It has all the nice bottom end, but it has a very clear bottom end. It's not a buckety, muddy bottom end. But it still has that weird Martin projection, which is good. We want that. This guitar is the neck is like butter. It's just it's it makes you want to play. You'll notice I noticed myself when I did the comparison video that I put different licks in the same tune because I just felt like I could. I it, it, the guitar itself makes you feel a little more free-handed to play what you want, right? a great guitar for for no money no money like i i honestly can say that i would take this guitar into a room full of martin players and jam with them without even blinking an eye and it's uh it's just the way it is it's it's uh, i don't even know like i i I'm not even sure how they do this, except for I know how they build Yamaha, the high-end Yamahas. But they probably do the same thing with these. They, they work in a shop with a single master, master luthier. And all the, all the kids that are building the guitars under that luthier are doing it for free. So that they can learn how to build guitars on their own. That's the whole purpose of why they're there. It's an art form, right? And uh, so these guitars, the labor to build them is virtually nothing. And so all we're really paying for is the parts and, and materials. I mean, it's just a nice guitar. I love it. And it's just, it, this thing is right out of the box green. The Martin's 15 years old. So, yeah, I love it. And uh, I want to show you one more thing before we before I leave that you'll probably get a kick out of. So I thought I'd show you one more guitar before <laughs> before I leave, and uh, I'm just doing it because I love these guitars so much that I, I thought I'd give you an idea. And you've probably seen me on here with them already. And this it's the Boucher. This is a uh, what they call a Studio Goose. It's a it's a sunburst herringbone and uh, mahogany back and sides. And uh, wait a minute now, this might not be, gotta make sure. Yes, 
Sometimes he uses some wood that's difficult to tell what it is, but this is South American mahogany. And this was the second guitar that I bought from him. I call her Boo Boo, because she has a little mark right there where he dropped a tool on her. And he didn't want to sell it to me because of, of the mark. And I demanded I have it because I, I thought the mark made it special. And uh, this guitar, in my opinion, eats the first two. <laughs> a beast. Wow. She rings and rings and rings. I have seven of these. I, they're my favorite guitars I've ever owned in my life. And, uh, you can't go wrong with them. And this isn't even his bluegrass guitar. He calls, this is the Studio Goose. It's slightly, it's braced slightly differently to, uh, to take out some of the bottom mud. And so that you, with this guitar as a recording guitar in front of one of these microphones in here is just astounding what it sounds like. It has, I can record this from three feet away with a ribbon mic. And it sounds like I'm in the room with you when you listen to the playback. It's just incredible. But anyhow, I really appreciate you guys doing this with me. And uh, if you get any more ideas for videos, let me know. Uh, or tunes or whatever. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be part of the group. And uh, there was some really well thought out and intelligent comments in in this on this little run we did today i really enjoyed listening to everybody's uh input and and what they love about guitar and sound and and what they're looking for and i hope that i hope that this gives you a good idea that you don't have to spend a ton of money you don't and it, but if you want that martin and you want that taylor or that gibson or that whatever it might be if you want that guitar and you feel like you need it because it's it's part of the of the history of of the music and the history of you just want to be in there with the guys who played that gear, right? I understand it. I've done it myself. Do it. You can't go wrong, you know. It you're liable to get a good guitar. It's hit and miss with the bigger companies. I know this and everybody knows that. We all look for that one, that one that fits us, right? And if it's a Martin, it has to be a Martin, buy a Martin. That's that's what you should do. But buy a Martin knowing there's a grand possibility that you could buy something else that may cost like a thousand dollars less or three or four thousand dollars less, the Alvarez, right? It, it, the choices are out there and we should never be afraid to to get the gear what whatever whatever it might be that makes us happy and excited to learn and excited to play and excited to share what we know with each other that's the secret of of playing guitar is talking about it with each other and sharing what we know Always remember, I'll leave you with a quote for the day. And I was told this a long time ago when I was a kid, and I, and I found out it was true more than once. When you walk into a room full of players, 
and you you find the worst guitar player in the room. That's the guy that will actually show you something you didn't know. It's a fact. Try it out. You can learn from anybody, and it's and that's what that that's what that quote is for. Doesn't matter who they are, how they play, how long they've been playing. They're going to do something that you don't know, and you're going to learn just by watching them. Or they might take time to tell you. Either way, don't discount anybody. Don't discount any guitar. And keep on picking. Guitar players have more fun.